Hi everyone, I'm Peter Hendy, I'm the Chair of Network Rail and I'm going to show you a room on this station that even Tim Dunn doesn't know about. Come this way. And here we are. So we're, we're in Paddington Station. We're, uh, we've come down from the door next to the Mad Bear of Bishop's Pub uh, and we've come down a set of modern stairs into the last remaining Victorian room on the station, which was the Great Western Railway shareholders room. The shareholders in the early railways were pretty important people. They're people who'd invested well, serious wealth in the connectivity that transformed the life, the life of Victoria and Britain in every way possible. And the early railway companies, of course, looked after those people, if only because actually some of their investments were, frankly, very uncertain. And if you look at the early years of the Great Western with uh, uh, Brunel uh, busy building railways all over the West, but Gooch sitting up at night at Westbourne Park in locomotive sheds trying to repair enough locomotives to the trains the following day. You can see that although these things became grand institutions, they were a bit ropey to start with. So those companies looked after the shareholders fairly well, um, and this was the room that the shareholders would, would gather in for their, uh, for their meetings to find out how the company was going. It's the last surviving room like this on the station, because that would be next door. There was a whole suite of rooms, the, the, uh, the chairman's room, the general manager's room, uh, all, all sorts of other grand rooms that you can see in pictures, but the whole lot was hit by a bomb and set on board and demolished. So this is the only thing left. And then further along is, is Macmillan House, named after Harold Macmillan, the last surviving director of the Great Western Railway. And that was railway right offices, but they were all ripped out in the 60s. So this is it. This is with this gorgeous wooden panelling, with this fab fabulous high ceiling, with these great windows looking out over what was the cab road, which you would have arrived in, in your cab to depart for the west of England. This is it. This is the Great Western Railway probably a little before it said it, but actually looking grand for its shareholders, the people who'd invested money to build it. A special thank you to Sir Peter there, who took time out of his schedule of meetings at London Paddington, frankly, just to come and show us all that room, which is great. Thank you so much, Peter. He is a great example of how many people I get to meet right across the railway. Uh, who know, you know, perhaps something wonderful, or maybe a hidden place here or there, or a forgotten room. But all those, those places, all those places have got stories worth telling. They really do. Now, I'll tell you something actually as well, secretly. Uh, I've never seen that man quite so chuffed as the moment he discovered that it was actually a place that I had never even heard of. So, Hendy won, done nil, but I'm not going to let the chair of Network Rail win this competition, that's for sure, so watch out next year. Uh, talking of new station architecture, actually this year a competition was held by Network Rail and REBA, which is the, uh, the Royal Institute of uh, British Architects, uh, to design a modular small station, you know, sustainably. And I have to say, I really rather like the winning design. Um, quite surprisingly, this one actually, it's quite neat, it's adaptable, it could have community use potential, I suppose, um, and it also has got decent platform canopies, but uh, most importantly for me, it's got a clock tower on it as well. <laughs> if you want to actually go and see the designs, and we pass comment on them, just as I have done uh, on those pages, um, go to Network Rail, go to UK, and search for smaller stations.